I do appreciate the recognition, uh, but I won't keep this stuff. This will go to my mom, and this will probably go to my son, because I'm very uncomfortable being here with you guys. I do not rock with the police. That was a hero and a man by the name of Alex Mingus from Minnesota. And he was actually calling out police officers and their inaction at the very podium. He had been awarded a medal of valor by the police he was attacking. Mm -hmm. Now, not only is this guy an incredible person, but he's brave. I mean, he spoke out and you probably noticed the shirt he's wearing where he's calling out white supremacy. He previously had like a sweater covering it. And then once he took the podium, he took the sweater off, which like, I loved. Like Superman would. Yeah, and it says, of course, smash white supremacy. Now, before we get to the rest of what he had to say, which is the best part of the story, here's the context that you need to know about. So Mingus was awarded the medal after he responded to a shooting at a gas station. This occurred on October 8th. Now, here's what happened during that whole incident. Mingus was driving with his wife to work when he heard gunshots and followed a red van that left at a high rate of speed Okay, uh, from the shooting. Now, police chief Jeremy Ellison said that the van later stopped and a man who was bleeding profusely exited the vehicle and asked for help. Ellison said Mingus, okay, a civilian, wrapped a shirt around the shooting victim's arm to try to slow the bleeding. An artery in the victim's wrist had been severely damaged by a bullet. Doctors stated that the aid provided by Alex prevented this man from dying. That's amazing. He saved a man's life. But what's also, I don't even want to say it's shocking because I've like witnessed the inaction by cops, like in Los Angeles specifically. But he called out cops because of what they did when this incident happened. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's go to the next clip. Congratulations, I'd like to give you an opportunity to say a few words. Yeah, I appreciate it. I feel like I I did what anyone would have done with the little bit of training that they have, that I have. I'm a certified firearms instructor. That day, nine of your squad cars raced past us as I was flagging them down. It said in the letter you sent me. And that was a potential of 18 people. 18 people could have stopped to help preserve life. But 18 people chose to go to a potential threat. And I, and I recognized the man had a pistol and we didn't know what he was doing. But I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to say these things. And I just want folks to know that they don't keep us safe. We keep us safe. Damn. That was incredible. So again, not only did he save someone's life, he had the courage to say that at a podium that was provided to him by the very cops that he's ripping apart. Mm -hmm. And so you might be wondering what was the reaction from the St. Paul Police Department? They have yet to respond or release a statement. Yeah. I mean, he called him out and I'm so happy he did in the way that he did it mm -hmm. because I mean, it's so frustrating when you need help and I've seen this happen firsthand and they either don't show up or they'll see something dangerous happening and they don't do anything about it, right? So what he said in the end, they're not keeping us safe, we keep us safe. I mean, in this particular case, it was literally true. Yeah, yeah. I, I only wish that the cameraman hadn't zoomed in yeah. because I would have loved to have seen the look on the face of the guy who gave him the medal. But we didn't get to see that. And we, by the way, we can't see all the cops who were there to listen to what he had to say. I can only imagine that they're whispering to each other, this is terrible. When is somebody gonna do something? But they couldn't intervene because that would involve doing something. They were just waiting for a civilian to stop him from doing what he was doing. Uh, no, I, I it, look, it, it's, it's difficult to do. I can't imagine like he must have been worried about the response from the cops. And is he gonna be harassed by cops in the future? It is a brave thing to do, not only to save a life, but then to open yourself up to being targeted by the right wing, by the cops in this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and for the cops, like I'm sure they feel backstabbed as a result of this. Aww. Because I know exactly, but like I, they need to understand 
it's not like people hate cops because we just want to hate cops. I don't want I don't want to hate people who bake goods. I don't want to hate astronauts. I don't have any interest in hating a profession. What I want is all professions to do the job that they're supposed to do. And if you are a good cop, and I'm sure there's many good cops, you should hate the bad cops a hundred times more than we do because they're the ones who every day are making you guys look like absolute garbage. And we want the entire thing to be reformed specifically to lift up the good cops and to create a new culture where they can do the job they're supposed to do and fulfill their obligation to the people that live in their area. We can get back to a time when everyone loves the cops, but better because then it was basically just a reflection of white supremacy and a belief that the cops were always gonna side with white people against every other racial minority. We could have an actual healthy relationship yep. with the cops, yep. but it's gonna take a lot of reform to get there. Me. You can't do that officer because I call for your get supervisor. Out. I have my get license. Out. What is the you reason I'm getting to give you information? I, told you I didn't the refuse. Car. I asked. Now you're court. resisting. I haven't refused. I asked to speak to your supervisor. Get out, sir. I feel get uncomfortable. Out. Please get your supervisor. I don't give a don't touch, touch me. Like. I said get out. Please stop it. Why are you being like this? Is this is how y'all really are? Please stop. Uh, this get is out. all on tape. Please stop. Get out of the car. Please don't hurt me. Why are get you doing out. this? No, sir. I'm telling you, get out. I'm, I'm telling you that this is not lawful. Ah! Oh my God, that's not lawful, Get sir. Out. That's not lawful. Get out. What you just watched was an incident that took place in Tennessee. It happened on March 10th. A food delivery driver named Delane Gordon was calm throughout the entire interaction. He had questions for the officer who pulled him over, but the cop didn't want to answer any of his questions and decided that maybe he needed to tase the driver instead. Now, Ryan Wheeler, Gordon's attorney said Gordon was a few hundred feet away from where he was delivering food for DoorDash when the officer made a U-turn and pulled him over. After the incident, Gordon was booked, made bond and was released. You might be wondering why. Uh, you know, of course, he was charged with a re, uh, resisting arrest. Uh, Wheeler said that Gordon has no prior criminal record whatsoever. And you saw the video, super calm, asking questions politely. But the real problem here, Jenk, is what you bring up every time we do these types of stories, which is don't ever challenge the cop, don't ever question their authority, don't even ask them common sense questions. Even though the cop is supposed to tell you why you're being pulled over, it's the first thing that they're supposed to say to you. But in this case, if you have the audacity of asking, why was I pulled over? Can I speak to your supervisor? Oh, that's, I mean, he's lucky he got tased. In other incidents, we've seen videos of people getting shot to death. Yeah, imagine if this happened at any other job. Because it is a job, cops have, you know, go to work every day and they gotta work nine to five, whatever. It's just, in this job, we've given them massive amount of authority and a massive amount of weaponry. Imagine you go to a Dunkin' Donuts, you're like, do you guys any of you have chocolate glazed donuts? What are you asking me questions for? No, no, I just wanted to know if you have chocolate donuts. That's it, let's kick the crap out of them. They come out from behind the counter and just beat you to pieces. People are like, what? <laughs> what? What's? What kind of insane world are we in here, right? Imagine you go in and and somebody's a receptionist somewhere. You ask them the wrong question. She she takes out a taser, tase, 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 and then takes away your uh, and says, oh, now because you asked me the wrong questions or you didn't listen to me or you disrespected me, now I'm going to make sure that you go to prison for a couple of years, right? But with cops, we all take it for granted. Oh, it's normal if you don't quote unquote respect a police officer, which is not in any way, shape or form illegal. But if you don't respect a police officer, he has the right to assault you and maybe murder you and certainly make up charges against you like resisting arrest yeah. when there's no underlying charge and then put you in prison after kicking the living crap out of you. So Gordon, according to a local Fox affiliate in Tennessee was charged with speeding disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. Wheeler says those charges could carry up to six months of jail time. As we mentioned earlier, he was able to make bond and was released. But if he was pulled over for speeding, why didn't the cop just tell him, hey, I'm pulling you over for speeding? I've been pulled over for speeding more, more often than I would like to admit. And the first thing the cop asks me is, do you know why I'm pulling you over? And sometimes I play dumb. 
But as I got older, I'm like, yeah, I was speeding. <laughs> you know, but yeah. that's the first thing they're supposed to tell you. Why is that an offensive question? You're a public servant. As a public servant, you should be ready and willing to answer questions, especially when the person you just pulled over is asking you as politely and calmly as humanly possible. Yeah. It's all of this is unacceptable. I'm going to say the same thing. The second thing that I say in all these stories, it's in the training. We teach them that their authority is the most important thing in the world. And if anyone, you know, forget putting you in physical danger, hangnails, I mean, you can kill somebody, right? But if someone says something where they question you for even a tiny bit or they're slightly impolite to you, you have the right to just manhandle them physically assault them, take away their liberty, make up charges, it doesn't matter. I mean, how dare you he, that he asked you a legally valid question like, why is the government agent pulling me over and restricting my freedom? What's up, brother? What's up, man, how you doing? You doing all right? Yeah. Okay, so PSP Jonestown actually called it in, that's why I was behind you. Multiple calls that you're going over the line are you falling asleep or anything like that? No, sir. Okay. I'm very well rested and everything. Well, I've been behind you for five miles and you've gone over the fog line three times. What's the fog line? Bud, you're CDL yeah. and you don't know what a fog line is. The cop is being pretty rude right off the bat here. The the white line? Yeah. I didn't go over the line not one time. Well, I mean, it's filmed on my car, it, so it's filmed we're not going to sit on the side of the road. This driver having his own dash cam and his own evidence that he wasn't crossing the fog line while driving really changes this cop's tone. I need your logbook, your license, and all your info now. You like? What's Eli, that? Are you upset? You're not going to argue with state trooper on the side of the road. Are we clear? Uh, I'm asking if you're upset. Like, that's it. Can I take off my seatbelt? Take your seatbelt off. Your seat off. Like, I was like crying and whining. Like, hey, I'm a grown man, just like you. Okay, step out of the vehicle with your information. We'll go back to my vehicle. There's a history of cases where police officers have pulled over drivers because they've crossed the fog line and then have conducted unreasonable searches and seizures. And more often than not, when these cases make it to a court of law, they're thrown out of court. All right. Your license is right. Hold it in there. Okay. So this is just a warning. Again, like I said, I got to do my job because it was called in, but I can only speak to what I observed. Right. So I saw you cross the fog line back here. Okay. So that's what I gave you the warning for. No okay. citation. It's really unfortunate that the way someone handles being pulled over can change the whole trajectory of the interaction. I was behind you for five miles, I, like I was looking for it. I didn't see you like all over the road like they called in, so right. I can't speak to that, right? Yes, sir. Imagine if this driver from the beginning of this interaction matched the cop's energy. Imagine if he gave him the same attitude and rude demeanor that the cop gave him. How do we think this would go? How would it go entirely differently? This ended with the cop apologizing for his behavior to him. Um, so I can only cite for what I speak for. So you got the warning for that. It's not going to be on your license or anything. Okay. Yeah, I know you got CDL stuff like that. All right. Um, so a lot of times when we come up to trucks, we never know what we're in for. So I apologize for coming in the way that I did. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. I didn't it's mean fine. any disrespect. Yeah, it's fine. That's my bad. No, I messed up. I'm I admit it, so I apologize for that. I appreciate that too, man. But it, it's fine. I didn't take any heart to um, it. Public safety has to be about so much more than pulling people over for minor traffic violations. It has to be about actually keeping people safe. It's too often the case that when a police officer enters into a situation, they end up escalating it rather than making people in the situation and those affected by it more safe.